Ah, see. Okay, so I think let's let's drop this. Uh, instant. Oh, did we get somebody to check if they want or something? Okay, so let's do live. Let's say rotate. So that is You check on YouTube. Let's, uh, Now it is showing differently. See the video itself is different. Well, it's typing this word. Yeah. See how does it look like now? Oh. All right. Does it show on Facebook? Good, yeah. And the text and everything, slide link, everything, so that's nice. So let's me let me see. I can see my own YouTube actually. Oh, so, what? Uh, where, where, where did it show that we were eating that screen? Which oh, I should actually go to the view myself. Right? If I go to the YouTube video that thing, it should show me the comments that people are posting. Yeah. Hey, uh, Daksh, I see that you're watching. Can you also check and let me know if uh, Instagram is showing properly or it's the uh, 90 degree shift? Ah, I see Pratik in uh, Insta. Pratik, you know how do I actually change it? Turn the camera in Instagram for the 90 degree shift? Rotation. We tried before starting, but I couldn't get anything there. But it's okay. Do, do they really have to see me? They only have to listen to the audio and uh, uh, look at the slides. Yeah. yeah. I'm just waiting to see people joining on YouTube.
Good. Let's let's give another minute or so, and then uh, we can start. I see people joining in on Facebook. I see some people on Insta. YouTube seems to be like low, or probably I'm not seeing. Uh, usually, I get to see who's on the. So, if if any of you are on YouTube, can you just say hello there, so so that I know you're actually on YouTube also. Oh, well, let's get started. So I will actually uh, share my screen for, for people uh, watching on YouTube. You will probably get to see the video directly uh, or the slides directly from my screen. Uh, for people on Facebook and on Insta, uh, there's a link for the slides on, uh, on the description of this video. Uh, feel free to click that, and you should be able to access the Google Drive slides. And uh, uh, I mean, be with me on the talk. Uh, when I'm walking you through um, the slides. OK, so let me share my screen. So you should be able to see now a screen, which is my slides. Right, so all of you should be able to see my uh, uh, slides right now. Good. And can somebody confirm that you're able to see the slides properly? Somebody on Facebook. Good. OK, so let's get started. So um, so I have a lot of uh, deck of slides uh, to walk you through. Uh, <clears throat> but but let, me, uh, let me start uh, with a little bit of a sort of say background or people uh, involved in this project and all of that. So we are having super fun uh, in this project for last, uh, I think from uh, at least from April 1st week, we've been having a lot of fun in terms of sitting together and doing things. Uh, but for some time, uh, we've been doing interesting stuff together. So here's a slide which will uh, show you the fun that we're having. This is the uh, students who are actually working on this uh, project, uh, particularly who are doing the uh, face analysis uh, every face, so you can see the picture from left top till uh, right bottom, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are six faces that we have been uh, uh, analyzing um, uh, for the last uh, few weeks. But these are the people uh, that have <clears throat> put their heads, brain, heart, everything together uh, for the analysis that uh, you're going to be seeing. Everything that you see now is basically work done by uh, the people in these pictures. By the end of the uh, slides, you should actually, some of you should find out there are like four people common in all the pictures, I think. You should find out who the four people are. OK, good. So anything good that you see uh, is all credits to them. Anything bad that you see, please put it on me and uh, uh, make a comment on the videos. Any, any of the platforms, we'll take it up. All of them are also watching this uh, live feed. I hope they are watching. I've told them to watch. Uh, but they're also watching this live feed. They should be able to pick up your ideas, comments, everything from there. OK, uh, first a disclaimer uh, about uh, the, the deck of slides, about my next, let's take one hour or so, is that it's completely work in progress. So we've been uh, only uh, trying to find the interesting patterns, interesting, uh, so to say, data uh, from uh, the selections. <clears throat> um, but as you can easily see, I'm, I'm like super excited uh, about this work, I've been like spending a lot of time in terms of actually uh, uh, picking up ideas from different places, picking up uh, uh, ideas from even uh, students, and trying to do some digging into the data uh, and all that. Uh, so my main criteria for today was to share this excitement. I, I've actually seen in the last uh, five six weeks of the post that I keep doing about the analysis, a lot of people asking questions, and recently I also gave a talk, uh, a couple of talks in uh, institutes and in some places in Hyderabad. Uh, there's a general excitement about, wow, that's a lot of data, uh, interesting uh, patterns, uh, and uh, can can some conclusive uh, analysis be done and all of that, right? So that's that's my uh, motivation today, uh, to share the excitement. And of course, there's a lot of people now talking about or wanting to study um, data science, 
uh, all all kinds of machine learning algorithms and everything like that. So there's a lot of that uh, also deployed uh, in this project. So you will get a sense of what we are doing uh, as we move forward. Um, and again, I've, I've kept like one hour, one hour, 20 minutes, depending on how uh, many people join and how uh, interesting all of you uh, think that it is going. We can actually walk through the uh, deck of slide as much as possible. But given that you already have the URL, uh, feel free to access the slides uh, and, and uh, take up uh, uh, everything that you want from there uh, in the slides. Uh, so can that can can somebody on Facebook tell me whether you're able to actually see my screen? YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. So probably. Oh, Vedant, uh, I see you join in. Can you tell me whether you're able to see my uh, slideshow screen, which is the slide must be the screen must read as as the battle for general elections 2019 shifted online. Okay. So it is possible because it is um, because I think it is just doing the Firefox slide share. Uh, when I said uh, the application, it is just doing one of the window. Okay. Let's, do something. Okay. So let's start the screen share again. I will just do my entire screen. Okay. So now you should be able to see the slide. Sarab, can you tell me if the slides are on the screen called Ask the Battle for General Elections 2019 Shifted Online? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, so one of the blogs that we wrote uh, some time back was uh, looking at this, uh, meaning is as the general elections 2019 shifted uh, online, uh, trying to see that, oh, there is a whole set of social media. Um, uh, some of the slides are not visible. Where? Where are the slides not visible? No, Facebook, the slides is going to show up. Uh, uh, Saurabh, Facebook, I don't think so. The slides will show up in your screen. You should go to the link that I uh, posted in the description of this video. Yeah, OK, cool. Um, so yeah, so this, this whole thing about uh, uh, general elections, this elections is on, so to say, social media. Um, or, or generally online was a question that we were trying to uh, take uh, early. Uh, so we said we should actually start looking at this thing, uh, elections, uh, or meaning social media data quickly. But the thing that uh, motivated us was uh, uh, even our study in 2014. So we have some background. Uh, Abhishek Bola, one of the master students that uh, we had earlier, um, did some analysis on um, elections 2014 and these are the this this slide basically shows you different uh, aspects of uh, social media uh, that are being discussed right now right the election commission uh, basically is looking at oh there is uh, a 48 hour some kind of conditions are there uh, how are political parties actually following them on social media and of course social media is playing a big role in terms of spreading of information first time orders fake news all of that so this, this set of things was also uh, uh, some motivation for us. So that's the Abhishek Bola's master thesis. And uh, I mean, the URL for the thesis is at the bottom of the slide. And if any of you are interested, so we actually made the data uh, that we collected from uh, this 2014 elections also public. Uh, so if any of you are interested, feel free to take it. So the first thing that I thought I would actually talk about is uh, um, this uh, Election Commission of India's uh, website from where we actually collect some data. Uh, first, first interesting observations that we had was uh, uh, from the uh, affidavit data that 
candidates actually upload on or candidates uh, presented to the election commission and election commission uploads it on uh, their website so this is their website from where we are actually from the data that we are collecting the first analysis set of analysis that we're doing is from here uh, so what essentially happens is if you want to uh, contest the election, you basically uh, create an uh, affidavit, prepare an affidavit with uh, a form which is filled uh, with different details and you submit it to the election commission and they approve you. That's why if you see this uh, slide, it says all accepted, rejected, withdrawn, contesting, different, different categories of uh, sort of say candidates. Um, so what we were interested particularly is that we actually went through this uh, data that TCI has and uh, we took state, constituency, party name, uh, basically the full outfit of it, we went through it, age, uh, gender and social media accounts. Right? So these are the pieces of information that we were interested in, of course, the question that we were asking uh, was relevant only to uh, with these uh, pieces of information. Right. State, constituency, party name, age, gender, social media account. But there were other details like name, financial details. Uh, there were many in the, the, the form. So we are basically annotating uh, uh, right now for the phase seven, which is going to happen on this uh, Sunday. And uh, the affidavits are at least about uh, eight to 10 pages long uh, with different details from the candidates. Uh, so what are the different kinds of analysis that we could do? One of the analysis that uh, we did was, uh, or we were looking at is the uh, heat map of, so basically saying that which constituency has how many number of uh, candidates and uh, the one on the right is actually, uh, is the gender uh, ratio, female versus male gender ratio, which is darker it is, the more the uh, females are contesting the elections. One on the left is, the uh, darker it is, the more the candidates that are contesting in that constituency. Uh, so one of the big things that at least I picked up from uh, this uh, sort of analysis or this whole project in the last couple of months is actually even knowing about the country itself uh, better, right? Different constituencies, uh, how many people are contesting, what kind of details are asked and all of that. So it's actually pretty exciting uh, to know about the uh, country through uh, this elections project. So we actually stumbled upon this uh, interesting uh, thing, which is in the affidavit in Form 26.3, there is a question or there is a piece of information that uh, uh, the election commission is requesting, saying my contact telephone number, basically this is filled by the uh, candidate. My contact, co contact telephone number is, or my email ID is so-and-so, my social media account is if any, right? Uh, so with this, we can actually collect uh, uh, different meaning with this data saying that PK is contesting the election and PK has this uh, uh, in the form we in the effort of it we know that PK's age, PK's gender and he's filling the social media handle so we can actually do a lot of analysis because you also give you a party detail uh, you also give the give the uh, constituency that you are actually contesting all of that right so with that we could do actually interesting analysis here's the first one um, so this graph is showing so uh, as, as I said, it's work in progress. So currently I'm showing you for phase six, we can, so if you, I mean, at the end of the slides, uh, I have a URL where you can go get data for all the phases that we've done. And uh, after May 23rd, we're actually going to analyze all the data together and actually give you, uh, po I mean, make public the analysis of uh, all the data together itself, right? So this graph is basically showing you on the x-axis age and the y-axis is percentage of uh, candidates, which, Basically, the way to read this uh, graph is uh, for, with the age of 25 to 35, uh, there are about 22, 23% of uh, uh, candidates uh, have a Twitter account. Uh, and uh, about 35% have a uh, uh, Facebook account and about 8 to 9% have Instagram account. So it's basically showing you that Facebook across uh, all uh, Facebook and so to say uh, Twitter uh, is is equally used, Facebook being higher, Twitter being uh, next, and then Instagram being the lowest. So phase six is actually this way. Interestingly, if you go look at the phase five analysis, we, we had an interesting observation that uh, Facebook is um, used uh, consistently with everybody. Uh, Twitter, as, as uh, older candidates they are, they actually use Twitter lesser. Okay. And, and the way we've done is this is data that is manually annotated from the affidavit from uh, the ECI website. Here's more. So this is uh, knowing your candidates, so to say. Um, 
Yeah, Vivek. So wait, uh, I see Vivek. I I see your question. What tech stack uh, have you used? Uh, you just wait for like a few more slides. You you'll get the answer there. Um, so this one is uh, a, from a candidate. Uh, so just just look at the um, information that the candidate is uh, filling, right? So he says not available, not available, not available for the three uh, questions that are. Uh, options that are given, and then he actually gives away the ICICI uh, bank detail that uh, he has with IFSC code, account number, and name, and everything. So that's what they're filling uh, in the uh, form when asked for social media data. Here is another one. So this is basically showing you uh, some bank name that the candidate has actually given in the uh, affidavit. A Facebook ID. Uh, so this is. A candidate has given the uh, email address from using which uh, he or she is probably logging into Facebook as the Facebook ID. That's not the Facebook ID, right? Uh, here, this candidate, the one on the top, the candidate is basically given uh, his or her name, WhatsApp, the number was there. I have actually removed, uh, anonymized all that so that that information is not uh, made public. Uh, what's our Facebook data, uh, Facebook to Twitter, Instagram, Google, all of it, the candidate has given just the name. Just the name, I can't find anything, right? Facebook, there are uh, many, so to say, Shristi Guptas, right? Many, uh, um, Manish Gupta, right? Uh, so you, just the name, name with, uh, just with the name, I can't find the candidate, or nobody can find the candidate. Uh, same example uh, in the bottom also on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and on Messenger, uh, the candidate has given just the name. There is another candidate uh, when asked for a Facebook account. Uh, candidate has given so many Facebook accounts. I actually went and checked each of the uh, Facebook uh, URL, except for three or four, uh, none of the pages exist as of now. But this is the information that the candidate has actually filled in the ECI uh, affidavit form. Right. Uh, the one at the bottom is that email ID, uh, Facebook page. So the the important one there is my Twitter account. It says uh, twitter.com question mark ref source equal to email. So that's probably a referral URL from the email, and then they just took the URL from the browser and uh, put it here. Yeah. So this is also uh, interesting one. The one on the bottom basically says that here is my Facebook uh, ID. Actually, it's not even an ID. It just says the name. Uh, it says Facebook deactivated ID. Right, uh, and uh, the one on the top gives you the number. I, I think there was some number there, eight or ten digit number there. And then the bottom actually has uh, the name uh, and says that it's deactivated ID. And the one on the top is also interesting, is because Twitter at the rate, uh, the user has given the name uh, with the party affiliation. So the first part is first name, second part is uh, last name, the third, which I have, uh, so to say, anonymized. Uh, is a party name. And the user actually explicitly states that there is a space uh, uh, here, uh, but the space is actually not allowed in um, uh, Twitter. OK. Um, so, so, so this this work, uh, this analysis that we did, got into a uh, media article. That's the uh, media article that talks about the analysis that we did. Uh, somebody asked earlier about uh, the tech uh, technical stack, and here I'm giving you just about the data that we have, and the next couple of slides is also technical stack that we'll talk about. Uh, so, what kind? So, there are like different types of data that we're collecting. So, the first anal first data that we're collecting is. Uh, 1285 verified accounts. There are uh, so basically we looked at all the political handles that are uh, discussing posting about uh, elections this time, and uh, we found 1285 verified handles. So what we basically do is the followings of this uh, 1285 verified accounts we take and we actually collect all the tweets of that uh, handles. Uh, number of hashtags that we are so basically a hashtag of the the more official hashtag for these elections is hashtag uh, Lok Sabha elections 2019. Similarly, there are like 1400 hashtags that we have collated over a period of time. Uh, we uh, take that and we actually collect the tweets uh, from these hashtags. And uh, as I said before, we also have the 2014 data. So another interesting question that we are also trying to ask is. Can you actually compare from 2014 data and make some interesting observations? 
right? So there are about 450,000 users who were active in 2014, are also active now in 2019. So we're collecting basically the tweets of these users also. And uh, to, to uh, study some uh, questions, we're also taking some snapshots of uh, these verified handles over a period of time. Right? So that will give us some, uh, so to say, data saying that, oh, how did PK account look like uh, last month? And how does this account look like this now? Right. So that can give you some um, interesting uh, analysis that we could do. OK. Yeah, so so I think uh, Vivek, uh, uh, Saurabh, all of them are asking some questions. So we'll get back to your questions, because uh, I think we'll go through the slides, and we'll take up questions as much as uh, uh, we can uh, when, uh, uh, when we're done with the slides. Right. OK, uh, so this is uh, the slide that uh, should show up here uh, for the technology stack here. Down here, so this should show up. Right. So the first one is the Python that we use, uh, and then the data is stored in MongoDB, and uh, then we use uh, Plotly for all the graphs. So every every data collection that all data collection that we're doing is basically through uh, Python and uh, uh, stored in uh, Mongo. And uh, the graphs, any graph that you're seeing in my slides or on the website is basically out of uh, uh, Plotly. And um, Plotly also, uh, so yeah, there's multiple screens of uh, Plotly itself. Uh, and then we use, uh, so some of the screens are not loading. That's why I'm going back to my uh, source window to show you what, what I have in the slides, right? Um, and then we have, uh, How do I show you best? Yeah. So the one on the uh, left is actually Flourish. Uh, so this is a recent tool that we started using, which is basically uh, giving you uh, uh, ways by which you can actually present. For example, one of the uh, slides later you can see is that uh, top 20 mentions across one it's page, uh, you can actually see how the trending is changing uh, over a period of time. And uh, Sigma JS is uh, the one that we're using for uh, creating so Gephi is the a tool that we're using for uh, creating the network graph and for posting it on so to say our website the face comparison page and other places uh, we are actually using the Sigma JS. Okay, so Vivek, I hope uh, that answers your question. Technology stack that we use uh, so Python, MongoDB, uh, Flourish, uh, Plotly. Uh, so to say, Gephi for network and Sigma JS for uh, the uh, creating, making the network graph uh, to be hosted as an HTML page. Is that okay? Good. So let's go back to the slides. Hopefully, this will continue working. Okay. So, so for people accessing it from Facebook. Uh, I hope the slides are, uh, you're able to access the slides and everything like that. I, I'm just going through the uh, questions or comments that people have asked. I, I'll make some quick remarks and then we'll move on so that people asking this question are, are not restless uh, for not hearing. What, what tech stack? Vivek, I hope you got the answer for tech stack. Uh, what other questions? Good evening, sir. Would you be making the data set used for analysis publicly? Of course, Shiv Kumar. Uh, the goal is to actually make, uh, as much as data as possible uh, public for uh, for people to use. We have actually already made data public. Uh, so if you go to our website, uh, there's already data that uh, we have made uh, public from this 2019 election itself. Uh, so we'll try and make as much as data public uh, for you to uh, play around with. Uh, how do one make sure that the selection is not biased? Um, I don't know what selection you have in mind, uh, but if you're saying that the selection is about the hashtags, Selections about the tweets, selections about the rate limits that we're getting from uh, these social media services, we can't control it, right? 
So there is nothing uh, we can do about it. So the, the goal for us is to get whatever possible uh, and uh, try and make inferences uh, possible from that. Uh, but there is already research done um, uh, in the past to show that the data that we are collecting from all these rate limit biases or rate limit conditions and the sample data, all of that can be actually used to make some uh, observations which, which can be very useful and statistically also uh, people have shown that this uh, inferences from uh, social media data, which is sample data, uh, can be useful. Vivek, I hope that answers to start with. Yeah, this, these kind of questions are hard to uh, find uh, answers because it is also dependent on the question that you're trying to ask, right? Because if you look at the question about the 1285 verified handles, Meaning, uh, if, I mean, one of the one of the actually, let's go back to one of the re recent papers that we have. One of the recent papers that we have is basically looking at the verified accounts on Twitter, right? So we we looked at all the verified accounts on Twitter. Right? So there is no there is no sampling, there is no bias, there's nothing there, right? We have every verified account on Twitter, and we have the tweets, and we are able to actually make analysis of that. Similarly, in political handles, a political scenario in the elections, uh, twelve twelve eighty five verified handles. I Meaning we could have missed like one or two handles, but but I, I have a little bit of a confidence on all the at least the verified handles because we manually annotated multiple people actually have looked at it. We curated this list of handles who are speaking about elections, and then from there we narrow down to verified handles. So if the question is about oh let's look at uh, verified because the verified handles are the only set of things that you can actually study, right? Uh, right in terms of uh, in terms of what Pondurangam Kumaruguru as a candidate is speaking. Only when I have a verified account, you can actually do analysis saying that PK as a candidate who's this is speaking, or I should have come out and said that this is my handle, which is why we started looking at the available data. So I hope you understand there is, I mean, it depends, the bias question is there, uh, but, but it all depends on the kind of question that uh, you're asking. Right, good, so uh, cool. So. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you're able to access the slides, people who are in different platforms. Uh, so let me just look at my YouTube uh, uh, for a second. Yeah, OK. Um, wow. Vivek is asking the question on all the platforms, it looks like. OK, cool. So let's go back to the deck of slides. Ah, so first, one of the questions that uh, I mean, given my uh, interest in privacy and security in social media itself, uh, one of the questions that we were all, we, we started looking at was the suspect users. Uh, so interestingly, on November eighth, um, I think, the Twitter actually unplugged, uh, removed a few million accounts, and they about a year or two years, about a year and a half or two years back, they actually removed some tens of millions of accounts, right? Uh, so this was the news, and uh, this has happened in November. Uh, but, the, but the question that we, we were interested in was, oh, so if Twitter has removed a lot of uh, accounts which are suspects, how are our political handles that we were actually uh, collecting data, particularly the verified handles, how did they fare? How much of followers did they lose, right? If PK had a million followers, and uh, depend because of this removal by suspect users, or from Twitter, PK loses uh, some followers. How much do uh, how much is PK losing? How much is other political handles losing? That's the question that we were interested in. Okay, so here is a here is the first uh, graph uh, in this analysis. Um, I'm sure many of you know the political handle uh, which is mentioned on the slide. So, so I've highlighted the right-hand side depth, right? So on November 8th, this particular handle lost 124,000 uh, followers, right? Uh, basically, this means that out of the few million accounts that Twitter removed as suspected users, uh, this handle lost 124,000, right? What does that uh, uh, mean? Uh, so this, this handle had 124,000 followers, which could be suspected users according to uh, Twitter. Let's continue looking at more handles. So here is another handle uh, which lost eighty-one thousand. Right. 
So we looked at all the verified annuals that we had, 1285, uh, and uh, we calculated the number of followers that uh, each of these accounts uh, lost. So for, for further details, you can go to the uh, blog that we have written. The blog URL is on the slide. Uh, but here is the interesting question that we are asking right now, right? That is, that is like so many other interesting uh, questions that you can ask, which is, oh, if uh, Andal X lost A number of users, Andal Y lost B number of users, is there an overlap of this uh, number of followers that uh, these two handles actually lost? Right? And what is the overlap? Not just being, not just is, is there an overlap, but how much is the overlap, right? So then you can actually ask. Uh, infer other interesting uh, observations from it, saying that, oh, if there are overlap of 80, 90 percent of the um, suspect users that are getting lost by two handles, they both had these uh, followers following them, right? And you can make inferences of how these suspect users were created and all of that. So one of our, one of our uh, uh, keen interests is to actually study this uh, suspect users. OK. Any, any, yeah, for, for all platforms, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post it here, uh, and uh, we can take it as we uh, move forward. So here is a gender uh, question that we asked. Uh, we were interested in actually looking at, uh, uh, so to say, female to male ratio. That's one of the things that we add uh, in our comparison page also, uh, female to uh, male ratio. So this is a uh, number of handles, only verified handles, number of handles in uh, each of these parties. And the next slide will actually give you the, uh, so this is basically showing that blue is male and the red is female. It's showing out of the 100% of the candidates, how many are actually uh, male versus female. And we also dig this uh, gender thing more uh, to find out which uh, handles are more engaging, male versus female. I'll, I'll show you some slides uh, as we move forward. So this is basically showing you across the country where the uh, male handles are from, where the female. So again, I'll highlight this point, uh, particularly because we talked about bias a little bit. All of this data has to be, so to say, to a large extent correct, is because one, it's verified handle, and two, it is, uh, I mean, these handles supposedly should have the correct information in their verified, uh, in their account. And of course, we are also getting some of these data from the, uh, ECA data, which is the affidavit that they are uh, filing to contest the elections, which which I assume uh, should not or cannot have uh, falsified information. Okay, good. So here, uh, what uh, what we're so following on the question about this gender itself, uh, we start looking at oh, who's having more engagement on um, social media, right? Male versus female. So in this case, the difference is little. Uh, the difference is really small, which is uh, followed by average number of so the 368.5 thousand followers uh, female on average a female account has, whereas male account has 347. That's a very small difference. Uh, we also saw that uh, uh, females get uh, retweeted more, which is 549 versus 530. Actual numbers are also on the right hand side again. Uh, this is uh, data that we have made already public, which is the verified handles uh, details, which is the followers, followings, all of that is already made public with the gender information. So you can actually go play around uh, yourself. The numbers will slightly change uh, because the analysis that we did, it's probably at some point in time. Now, if you look at, for example, if you go look at uh, the uh, number of followers of uh, um, any of the handles mentioned in the slide, they may be actually slightly more or less, depending on how uh, the followers are. Yeah, so this is profile information, uh, giving you uh, left is male and the right is uh, female, uh, just showing you what they write in their bio. Again, interactions, how the, so we'll, we'll actually look at interactions more later, and our website uh, has all the, uh, so to say, uh, network graphs that we have drawn uh, to show you how the interactions are between the um, handles also. So here, every blue uh, circle is, every blue node is basically a male, uh, red uh, node is a female, how the interactions are is uh, shown here. Interactions here are basically following uh, pattern, following. 
Okay. So uh, again, uh, so everywhere, wherever the, uh, we have written blogs or made data public, I mentioned it uh, when that section ends. So in this case, uh, there's a blog that we wrote about just this gender, uh, who's more active and all of that. Engaging, so to say. So I'm sure many of you would have uh, known about uh, or heard about this Mambi Chokidar um, campaign. And this is the first tweet that was posted uh, about Mambi Chokidar, hashtag Mambi Chokidar. Uh, so we got curious about it. We started collecting data. Uh, so we have some background uh, in understanding uh, the username changes or information that users change. Uh, over a period of time. This is one of the a PhD student who did work, Pariti did this work some time back uh, to show. So this graph, the way to read this graph is uh, x-axis is uh, the different pieces of information that is in the available in the account, which is username, name, description, location, language, zone, and profile picture. And the y-axis is percentage of users who are changing that much. So let's, uh, let's look at the name. Uh, what does it show? It's showing the dark blue color, which is probably about 15% or something. Uh, people have changed. Fifteen percent of the users have changed their name twice in the period that the analysis was done. Right? There are even users who have changed five times. Let's go to the profile picture. In the period of eight point seven million users were seen, uh, a profile picture was changed at least five times in this period. Right? So this is the uh, kind of things that you can study if you have the snapshot of a particular user over a period of time. Right? So you can actually look at how users have uh, changed their information over a period of time. Right? So that's the blog uh, about uh, Mabi Chokidar uh, uh, campaign that we analyzed. So here is a, here is a um, set of, so to say, verified handles who actually changed their name. So uh, let's be clear. There's two parts of change that I'm going to be talking about. One is just the name, which is this, which is written here, Chaukidar in the name. Uh, in this case, it says Chaukidar Amit Shah. The uh, username is just Amit Shah. So I'm going to be showing you the changes in both, uh, which is uh, looking at the changes that users have made. Okay. So here is a set of examples of uh, um, all the users other than the verified users who have changed their uh, who have changed their uh, username, uh, who changed their names. So let me go back to look at uh, people watching on YouTube. Good. Yeah, I saw some conversations on YouTube. Continuations on YouTube on any of these platforms. We'll come back. Uh, if there are questions, uh, I will take. Uh, but I'll let you guys also have conversations about uh, uh, whatever is going on. Right. Uh, so here are the users who have actually changed their names. So when you look at the, so again, if you have this data, you can actually ask these questions in different ways. Uh, political parties, uh, number of people who changed. Uh, uh, non-political parties, all of that uh, you can analyze. So collected tweets, so what did we do? We collected actually, we started looking at Mandy Chokidar as an hashtag. We collected all the tweets from these, uh, uh, from Twitter about Mandy Chokidar. We saw 404,000 tweets posted about, posted by 130,000 uh, user handles. 46,000 of the handles added Chokidar or its variants to its name. So basically it shows, shows that 36, 35%, 36% of the users who posted about Mavi Chokidar actually added Chokidar in their name. Right? And interestingly, we also saw that uh, 99%, uh, 99 variations of Chokidar itself. I was actually quite surprised uh, when um, I, I got to know about this, right? Uh, so when, when uh, students actually pulled up the different variations of Chokidar that was used, here is a sample, but there are about uh, 99 variations of Chokidar that people have used in their um, name. And one of the interesting ones was this 
chowkidar also um so it it shows that in different parts of the country chowkidar can be spelled differently and people are actually using it the way that they are interpreting chowkidar itself again i showed to some uh, uh, social science researchers uh, these are very interesting patterns right you can actually correlate with i think earlier we discussed again bias and everything uh, you can correlate this information that people are the kind of spelling that they are using to probably even the physical location or to some closeness of their physical location or their own uh, so to say background right uh, interesting uh, connection that you can make so we also saw uh, uh, about 18000 about 1800 people changed the name more than twice so here is one person on the right hand side who has actually changed his name like 12 times in a day 12 times across the period that we actually uh, collected the data so um so another question that uh, we wanted to ask was uh, what about so given that this campaign was uh, started by uh, uh, our prime minister so we wanted to actually study how much of the followers of uh, the prime minister has changed their names changed their usernames and all of that um so 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 about 4500 uh, changed their username so again there is a, that's why i marked it specifically as is different from the name so about 4500 people a uh, 4500 handles have added chowkidar to their username itself which is the example that i've given here chowkidar me too yeah um chowkidar alka right so that's in the username itself whereas the ones that we saw before is actually in the name so these examples that this exam sorry this example that uh, i've shown you here is actually on the name okay Uh, about 229,000 uh, followers are at Chokidar to their name, right? So there is difference between name and the username itself. Again, interested? Go look at the blog. Ah, so the next uh, next thing that uh, we we started uh, analyzing is is just looking at the whole uh, two two uh, handles itself, which is at the rate Narendra Modi. and at the rate raga namo and raga we started actually analyzing uh, just to look at how these two people act these two handles are actually managed okay um so i have a i have some deck of uh, so to say analysis again there is a lot of data here so we can actually go through some parts of it to show you some uh, interesting observations that uh, we at least saw i'm sure if you if you find anything interesting uh, we can talk about it also right tweets a uh, number of tweets number of retweets uh, times retweeted times favorited simple uh, uh, self explanatory uh, let's look at some of the other ones which are uh, interesting to find uh, and you have to have all the sort of say verified handles non verified handles to actually make this uh, analysis so this one is basically showing you that <clears throat> the first row shows reply to non verified handles how much is the conversation between these handles Uh, to a non-verified handle. Just to give a comparison, we actually took the uh, um, Donald Trump's uh, Twitter handle, and we actually did the same analysis with that handle. Right. Uh, so reply to verified handles, retweeted with the comment, reply to all handles, retweeted with comments. So basically, to show that uh, these handles have different ways of actually managing their account. For example, retweeted with comment, non-verified handles, Namo is much higher. compared to raga handle right and if you look at uh, the retweeted with comment to verified handles if you look at namo raga they look very similar right so these are the observations that we were keen on we were looking at uh, to to so to say have ah so the next one was Uh, so the next one was about um, uh, the language that they post. So this is the language that uh, Twitter itself is providing. In every tweet that uh, we collect, or every tweet that you can get from Twitter, uh, there is a language uh, tag that you can actually find. Uh, so this shows that they both are actually talking very similar in similar terms. Very small difference in English, but there's a larger difference in uh, Hindi. Uh, in terms of the uh, tweets that are uh, posted 
So here is another one. So these are, so again, there is a lot of connection between different analysis that we're doing. Uh, so one of the other pieces of, so I think the next, next slide also we'll talk about something more on this, which is zero tweets and zero followers. So again, going back to the suspect users that uh, we started off with, we, we are uh, keen on looking at the suspect users, suspect followers, all of that. So in this case, if you see 15%, close to 15% of uh, the uh, Namo's handle, uh, Namo's followers are actually, uh, which has only zero tweets and zero followers. They don't have tweets. They don't have actually followers. They are following uh, a Namo uh, handle. In, in Raga's case, it's slightly lesser, which is probably about 12%. Right. This can actually give you interesting uh, questions, again, more to dig, to see about the suspect users itself. So this is about the, uh, um, so to say, word cloud of all the tweets uh, that uh, they have posted. The one on the left is uh, Namo, the one on the right is Raga, uh, to show you what kind of topics uh, they are talking differently or similarly. Yeah, so we also started looking at uh, the um, comparison of number of followers, number of followers who are verified. So some of the details we actually showed you earlier also. Percentage of verified handles, followers. With, so here is an interesting number. So if you go to one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, seventh, uh, and eighth, which is followers with zero tweets, right? These 19 million followers of Namo and 3 million followers of Raga have not done any tweets. And the common users of these two is about 2.7 million users. Interesting, right? Interesting that uh, uh, the, the overlapping users of followers of Namo and Raga, they have not done 2.7 million people have not done uh, a single tweet. Followers with profile with no profile picture. Basically, uh, it is showing that 47, 48 percent of the followers don't have a, a profile picture. Similarly, for Raga, it's about 44%. Right. Again, interesting to see uh, uh, what kind of users are actually following these uh, uh, handles. Followers will tweet in the last one month. So again, the, the thing that we are also uh, interested in, when we say active and everything, we are also sort of say quantifying it to say that the tweet that we are looking at is in the last month or starting from 2019 and things like that. So this this uh, slide is showing you average tweet count, uh, average friends and following count, and all of that, just to give you more uh, sort of say empirical information about these two handles. And one of the uh, main goal for this project is also that, right? Just sheer numbers can we actually look at you know, numbers and have uh, interesting observations. Okay, so this one is about. Uh, uh, again, the, this is a blog for comparison that we I've been talking about. Interested? Go look at it. Uh, go look at the URL in this slide. So the next question is uh, another interesting question. One of the conversation we said uh, earlier. I mentioned about network uh, analysis that we'll do uh, from the data. So this is basically showing you the uh, follower following relationship between the different uh, verified handles. Uh, in the within the parties and across the parties also. So here is a question. So one of the interesting questions is, what is the interaction between the parties, within the parties and between the parties also, right? Handles. So the question is, how much of users in one party are following another party, right? So that's the analysis that we did. Here is a table. Uh, a lot of numbers, but I'll, I'll take one or two examples and walk you through. So the way to understand this is that, uh, uh, so we took all the uh, followers of all the accounts that let's take, let's take one of the examples as up, uh, look at all the, for, so let, let's take the next slide. Yeah. Um, so if you go to up, look at all the up followers, up uh, verified handles, and look at how many of them are actually following BJP. Okay, so that's about uh, uh, 912 uh, handles are actually following uh, ARP accounts, which are following uh, BJP. The next slide will actually make a little bit more, so to say, sense, which is that if you were to take one handle, which is ARP, how many BJP handles will it follow? That's about 9.4, 9 which is again in the row number four, 
which is op versus the way to read this uh, so to say table is uh, op uh, in the row and bjp in the column and if you see the numbers on the diagonal they'll all be high because internal this is why i'm saying within the party and across the party within the party there's bjp following bjp itself uh, versus bjp following inc right op following bjp is about uh, 9.4 whereas inc following bjp is about 4 there are some other uh, interesting numbers also you can actually look at uh, in this slide. Any any questions till now? Let me just take a small break and then see if there were any questions in the video, uh, in the Facebook or anywhere. Okay, cool. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be a questions in Facebook. Let's look at it here. Okay, cool. So let's take, uh, so I hope you're able to see my slides. So this is the slide with, uh, with the uh, um, video. So this is the video that is uh, slightly popular, which talks about if Narendra Modi and uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi were uh, roommates, right? And uh, these kind of videos have become more popular uh, more recently. Uh, one of the analysis that we did was to look at uh, uh, these kind of videos and see, I mean, what kind of reach has these videos had, right? So this time in this election, we're seeing a lot of satirical videos uh, about uh, different political parties, candidates, and everything. So we thought we'd actually look at the analysis in uh, um, to study how these videos are actually become popular, how much, so to say. So that's a different, I think we analyzed like six or seven different videos, and that's the different uh, data for likes, dislikes, and ratio, and everything. Uh, interestingly, this ended up actually being part of India Today's uh, show, uh, where they actually showcased our analysis, and the students uh, working in the project ended up being on TV, and our analysis was actually showcased in the program there. Uh, if you're interested more on this, this kind of analysis, you could go look at this uh, blog. So I'm sure many of you know. So let's let's start from the. It's 22:30. Uh, let's start from here, uh, which is basically to show that this is uh, in one of the phase. I think this was phase five uh, when we were looking at uh, the analysis. So. Uh, GOT, uh, the Endgame movie, and IPL are all actually were, were happening. I think this was a Monday. Um, and if you look at the, so what, what do we have on the left? Uh, left is showing you the different uh, hashtags and topics that were trending in that particular hour. So you can see the hour also. It says India trends for 2019, 29th March. Uh, 16 hours. The 16 hours is uh, shown now, 17. So it, it's basically going from 8, I think 7 or 8 to uh, 6 or 7 p.m. So it starts at 7 a.m. So it's all about GOT. A GOT, Endgame, sometimes IPL will come. Election doesn't come uh, that much. It could be because sheer number of people who are talking about it. And this is at the country level. We took the, we basically took the trending topics at the country level and we made this uh, a GIF. Uh, so now the last, uh, this Sunday, the phase six when we did, uh, I'm just trying to show you there are interesting analysis uh, uh, that you could do with the trending topics itself, right? So this is a trending topic for every hour uh, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you could see that the elections is uh, uh, mostly talked about, right? The same India level trending topics, right? Voting down six. Uh, phase six. Uh, so that um, uh, day we had this was a Sunday. We had the IPL finals, and it was also the uh, Mother's Day. So you could see all of that uh, being uh, in the trending topic. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I show. I I told you earlier about uh, uh, the uh, flourish. Uh, I think when somebody also asked about tech tech stack. Uh, at least to present the data, we are using this. 
so this is one of the examples that uh, I have to show, which is uh, if you just look at the top 20 mentions, you can actually see that the mentions of people, for example, Gautam Gambhir, uh, very small when he starts and then he kind of picks up, is very popular in the middle of the day, uh, uh, right? Uh, so that basically shows you, this is again, interesting visualization. So we are just using, I mean, I'm just using this only to have this visualization to, uh, to be shown, saying that the data that I just now showed you, um, uh, the data that I just now showed you, you can actually make these kind of uh, graphs uh, out of it. That's that's the point that I wanted to get across. Okay, good. So then we also do uh, Instagram analysis. Uh, here uh, in Insta, we say that there are so many unique posts, uh, there are so many likes, and then there are comments. So this Insta analysis is very simple. We basically look at the first post uh, that is done with the hashtags, with the hashtag called Inked, with the hashtag called I voted all of that. We keep track of those hashtags and we look at the post that is done with the um, those hashtags and we basically bring that out in our uh, analysis. Then we, so I think after first phase, we said that we should actually write uh, a blog. First phase, we actually wrote a blog after uh, the phase one was done. From phase two, we ended up actually writing live blogs. Live blogs is basically writing uh, as the analysis is done. So all the uh, analysis of these faces when, when it is done, uh, analysis that for every hour mentions, all of that, we, we sit down there 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., thanks to all the students here, uh, 7 a.m. to probably 10 or 11 p.m., we sit down and push all this analysis out uh, on the live blog. And I also tweet uh, from my Twitter account. Okay, good. Um, so, so any any questions? Uh, let's let's go back to YouTube also. Okay, good. So, as I said, I I'm not planning to actually go over all the uh, slides. So, I can actually I'll actually go back, and if there are any interesting things from here uh, I want to talk about, I'll pick that up, or I can actually take it to the end. Okay. So, essentially, we so I'll go through this. Um, so our, this work that we have been doing for some time, uh, now four or five weeks, uh, dedicatedly on this face analysis, uh, has been getting a lot of media attention. Here are some examples. These are not, uh, uh, so to say, complete. Just shows, shows only a few examples uh, for the analysis that we have been doing. And then at the end of the phase uh, that is done, we actually post the summary, at least the interesting ones that we think uh, that we observe, uh, in terms of complete set of uh, empirical data that we get with the data that we collect. And then five and six, we kind of changed our, so to say, summary uh, image that we post. Uh, here is the phase five and here is phase six. We also keep changing the uh, little bit, 10, 20% of changing the information that we are presenting also, uh, but otherwise, so for, for, for anybody who wants to go look at what comparisons that we have done, what data do we have uh, with respect to uh, uh, each of the phases, this is the URL that you should go to. So in any case, all the URLs, all the pointers that you want to go to is in the slides, but at the last slide, I have only one URL that you should also know to go to any other uh, parts of the analysis that we, I have shown you. Uh, so that basically shows the number of uh, tweets that we get in every every uh, phases. You can clearly see that the phase two was uh, extremely high, and uh, phase six has been also extremely high. I think the phase two at Mumbai and phase six at Delhi. So that could be the reason why these two uh, phases are actually very high. Yeah, so the some of the analysis, I think I briefly mentioned some of them, but let me just summarize uh, uh, what, are, what are the other things that we're studying. So one of the other main reasons for me to actually do this session also uh, is to actually show that what we are doing and also, so to say, seek uh, interest on any of the problems that anybody uh, who's listening to this live or listening to this video later uh, will have, we can actually talk about. So diversity of topics, how the topics are being, uh, so to say, talked about, 
uh, hashtags and everything. Diversity of languages, right? So let's go back to the see if the language is here. Uh, but let's go back to the summary slide. So if you look at the slide, phase four, uh, Hindi, Hin, uh, English, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, uh, and I think that's Beng, uh, Bangla. Uh, phase uh, four, right? Uh, Two sixty-five posts are from Bangla, right? So can you actually do? Can we actually do some analysis with this language uh, tweets that we have? Right. So that's a question that we are trying to ask in terms of diversity of languages, advertisements, which is also an interesting topic until now. How much money or how much money are uh, these political handles spending on the uh, uh, campaigning on on different platforms like Google, Facebook, all of that? Right? Can you can I mean I think there are uh, uh, now uh, Facebook, Google, sort of say. Uh, services where you can go look it up but can we actually do some interesting uh, digging into this uh, data that is available uh, of course the other platforms which is uh, uh, instagram whatsapp uh, so primarily we have been focusing on sort of say twitter but can you actually look at data from other platforms also artificial trends right so we we definitely see every uh, faces there are some hashtags that will pop up and they are like they're like bulldozed by some handles uh, and then they become trends, right? So we wanted to study how these artificial trends are being created um, and then how is it propagating? And of course, a very um, interesting question for, for, for people like us to ask is this again comparison, right? Because we have data for 2014, we're also going to compare the data between 2014 and 2019. That question did not come up here, uh, but, uh, but uh, I've, I've been asked this question recently in uh, uh, some places and even on social media, I think. Uh, but I thought I'll prepare for it, which is why can't we predict elections? And given that we see so much of data, can we actually predict, right? Saying that uh, which, which candidate, uh, which uh, constituency, uh, who will win, and all of that. Here is an example uh, that recently happened why we should not talk about actually prediction. Uh, so this is the URL for getting the data. Uh, so anybody who is interested in uh, uh, wanting the data, uh, any of the data, so you should go look at the slide 71, and you should look at, uh, basically, you should go to precog.tripleid.edu.in, and there is a link called resources on top, which is highlighted in the slide also here. If you click there, you should get all the, uh, so as I was speaking earlier, uh, I said, right, lots of by elections, Delhi candidates, social media details, uh, phase one candidates, and then the other one is verified handle. So we've made all this public already, which is in a JSON. So yeah, next slide also shows that. Uh, so we're just giving you all the JSON uh, objects so you can actually play around with this data. Ask questions that is interesting. Ask questions that are relevant to you. I, I already have some students actually talking to me right now uh, who are saying that uh, they want to take this data and do some analysis. Uh, I, uh, I think it'll be super cool. Uh, to uh, take this data, not just not just students, right? Anybody who is interested in this topic should be able to do analysis with this. Okay, um, so I don't know what's in the last slide, which is not loading, but let's go to that slide and then I will stop. Yeah, okay. So that's the this is the slide, which is again uh, uh, acknowledgement slide to show that people. There are many people who have actually contributed to this project, and many who are actually, uh, even in the background, uh, there are people actually helping us uh, in this project in terms of annotation, in terms of asking the question, in terms of having conversations, in terms of uh, uh, even looking at the 2014 data. Right? Uh, so I, I, I give a big thanks to uh, everybody who's involved in the project and uh, who's helping uh, with the different analysis. And this is a project which has actually a lot of uh, more analysis to come, more digging should happen. And uh, I thank uh, everybody who's involved. Uh, let's go to, uh, yeah, so that's the last slide. Um, yeah, so if you remember the one URL that I said you should remember, that's the only URL that you should remember if you have to remember any URL, any, anything taken from here which is bit.ly elections 19. So that will take you to a dashboard. The dashboard has links to other places. Or if you just, I mean, if, if, you, if you're interested in, uh, or you can also go to all these, uh, sort of say, pages through the 
precogs page also precog.reply.edu. Okay, good. So that's that's all I had. Uh, I kind of rushed a little bit at some point in time because I did not want to take a lot of time in terms of uh, going through uh, all the uh, details of every analysis that we did. It's just to show you a glimpse and uh, see whether there are any uh, interesting questions and comments and uh, actually ideas to take it forward also. Feel free to uh, look at the slides later. Feel free to send me questions, send me comments. I'm, I'm happy to actually take up uh, any of them later. Uh, but for now, uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to actually answer right now if you have. Let me go back to the... How do one develop a framework for such large scale analysis? Uh, is it an improvisation process? Uh, nice question, Vivek. Actually, Vivek uh, seems to be asking some um, interesting questions. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, uh, Vivek you taking time joining and asking these questions. Improvisation. So let's ask this question. So uh, I think I, I, I here I would give a big shout for all the students who have uh, spent uh, time with me in the past, right? Uh, because uh, so let's do the stop sharing and then I can actually talk about okay so that now all of you should be able to see only me uh, in the video okay uh, so Vivek the the point is that uh, I think I, I was talking about shout out to all the students who have spent time with me right? I think in the last uh, seven eight nine eight nine eight nine years possibly. We've actually accumulated a lot of uh, knowledge about how to do these analysis, right? So what are the interesting questions, uh, all of that. And in terms of collection, I think that's not hard. Uh, but in terms of magnitude, it's hard, right? There is, so just look at this, right? So we, uh, I think, um, I briefly mentioned it, but I think uh, if you just look at the magnitude, we're talking about uh, close to a billion tweets, right? And close to some 400, 500 million users, right? Um, so it is it is not very easy uh, to collect, analyze all of this data together. As of now, we are also analyzing case-wise, uh, making it into pieces, looking at only verified handles, looking at only uh, one handle, uh, Namo versus Raga, 46.5 million followers, right? So we are also breaking it into pieces and trying to see. And if you go look at, uh, if you go look at, so let me show you that actually. If you go look at the, yeah, let's let's do some live uh, demos itself. Yeah, so uh, let's go to this base comparison. So, right, I I assume all of you can see my screen even now, right? Uh, so here is so if so I want to take you to the network graph. So if you go to the network graph, so so there is a lot of users in each of the faces, right? Uh, but we can't actually show all the users in the graph. Right? There is there is limitation in terms of actually showing in the uh, graph itself, right? So therefore, every time we draw this graph, uh, they launch uh, figures out some sort of say number, uh, saying oh let's just show only the users who are greater than ten followers. Or, or people who have spoken about a topic more than 10. Right? So there is these kind of challenges that you end up uh, having. And of course, you have to, you have to learn, uh, take probably see what people have done, what the best tools that others are using, and try and use it, and improvise. I think you probably have the right word there uh, to improvise on uh, what to be done. Vivek, I hope I answered your question. Uh, super active you are in both Facebook and YouTube. That's very nice. Shiva N, in phase one, how many tweets were there related to TRS, Regional Political Party in Telangana? So, um, uh, Shiva, let's let's look at the comparison page. I don't think so. We have, uh, um, only TRS, we can look at it. So I, 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 I can easily get a, so phase one, there were about, so I, I assume you can see my screen. Uh, phase one, there were about 235,000 uh, uh, tweets. So we can easily go back and look at how many how many tweets had uh, the TRS regional political party in Telangana, how many tweets had uh, a particular hand <clears throat> and everything. That's that's easy to uh, analyze. Mm. 
you know, I'm wondering whether we have done this. So, but yeah, but we can take it up uh, and see how many how many have. Uh, but we are upset. Okay, Mohit, sir, what tools your team is using for the analysis of data? Have you used machine learning, deep learning for data analysis? If yes, can you please tell me what algorithms have you used? Um, so, Mohit, I think uh, you should go back to the slides and look at the tech stack uh, that I talked about. So, collecting data, Python, uh, um, Plotly for, uh, so to say, graphs and everything. Um, Flourish is one thing that we're using. MongoDB is for storing. A Gephi is for network. So we haven't yet reached, I mean, as of now, we're just doing this all statistical uh, analysis, right? We are not applying, we're not taking, so questions that we're asking, potentially we will end up using uh, machine learning uh, or uh, latest techniques is that, oh, we want to actually analyze all the images that people have posted, right? <clears throat> That's not a statistical question anymore, that I have to figure out what objects are there. Can you actually summarize an image? And can you take something out of that and then do characterize it saying, oh, you know what, elections, there was this one particular image that was extremely popular, which was actually posted. Today, what we're saying is retweets is the only way that we are actually saying that an image is very possible. For example, if you would have seen uh, an Instagram analysis that I showed, I showed that this one tweet by Virat Kohli was the most popular, most popular in terms of likes and by uh, comments. That's a very empirical number. That's all. We are not doing any so to say machine learning, right? More, does that make sense? Uh, so we, we so even today in the uh, discussion with the students, we talked about uh, one of the problems of analyzing images that will undoubtedly apply uh, machine learning, deep learning, all of that. When we do it and what algorithms we do, we'll come back to you and we'll actually, uh, of course, we'll write a blog or uh, uh, show the analysis, share the analysis with everybody, uh, but stay tuned for that. I'm with, uh, uh, that's OK. Uh, how to collect large number of tweets from Twitter API? Um, so I, I think it is about uh, just, I mean, Twitter API is Twitter API, right? Uh, uh, we are collecting as you would collect the data. Uh, but it's just that we're collecting large amount of data. So uh, you have to basically plan in terms of the rate limits, API keys, all of that. Why isn't there any party analysis on the work? They did like policy or any other kind of public work uh, which have huge diversity. Um, I don't understand the question, Vivek. Why isn't there any party analysis? What is a party analysis in the work they did like policy or any kind of public work which can which can have huge diversity? Okay, so I don't know about diversity. If you're asking that, oh, you know what? Uh, uh, so we we have actually done this analysis. I don't think so. We talked about in the uh, in the slides, but we have done this analysis. It also needs a little bit of manual annotation, which is uh, uh, take a political handle and classify the posts that they have done in different categories, right? So, for example, the classifications that we have done, we have seen before, uh, are congratulation messages, uh, uh, questions that they ask, conversations that they are having, threads that they are following, uh, doing and uh, uh, advisories that they're providing travel info for example uh, the prime minister's annual talks about his travel plans uh, his travel and his talks and everything so you you have to manually classify these tweets into some categories and then look at how these categories are moving around right uh, so that we have already done we have actually analyzed the uh, uh, topics again a flourish graph that we have somewhere uh, which talks about um, how these manually classified uh, posts uh, by the political handles are actually changing. So to say, so to say distribution of which are being more uh, used, uh, which are being more, so to say, frequent uh, by these handles. But we can't do this for all handles. We can't do this for all the posts because, again, there is this manual annotation. Probably we can do some manual annotation, learn it from that, uh, build a model out of it, and then do it. But that's, that's hard. So like healthcare, law, transportation, or finance, introduces Mohalla clinics and so on. Yeah, but these are all hard to, I mean, I, I completely understand what you're saying, but for a for a computer program to figure this out, it may be actually hard. I mean, I think there's a lot of manual intervention that's going to come up to uh, make these analysis, right? It's something like healthcare and all is easy. Oh, how many people are actually talking about healthcare? 
that's easy to find. But what are they talking about healthcare is not that easy to find, right? Because it could be, it could be the there could be a hashtag healthcare which we could collect the data or healthcare as a word. But then now, what are they talking about healthcare? Meaning, are they talking about policies that are released? Are they talking about some customer uh, service problems? How are they talking about uh, 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 pharmaceutical company talking about their products? So it's not clear how programmatically we can actually find an answer to this problem. I Meaning, we can do. I think we we tried some. Uh, topic modeling, all of that is in the so to say baking pipeline, all of that. So for now, for now we are uh, at least the version that I wanted to share right now is only to say that uh, look, there's a lot of data. Look, there's some interesting questions. Look, we can, we have done these kind of interesting analysis right now. We could actually dig more as we move forward. Vivek, I hope I answered. But if not, ask more questions. Happy to happy to take for some more time. Uh, are we going to analyze this data from the perspective of fake news? Ah, Shiva, that's a good one. So, of course, right? Uh, I mean, if you have seen the first deck of slides, a uh, few slides, you would have seen clearly that uh, there are uh, fake information is one of the big problems. Uh, so, of course, uh, we have students who are actually looking at it uh, currently uh, to see that uh, any information that are uh, any tweets, any content that was posted on social media, uh, was it fake? How much of fake information was spread? How did it get spread? All that question that we are asking. All right. Good, good. So I think uh, you've been. So, any, any questions on Facebook? No. Okay, but but I'm I'm happy to take questions later too. Uh, the video is going to be uh, left on the social media platforms, um, and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Please think about it. Look at the data. Uh, go to the website. Go to the uh, face comparison. Look at it. If you find any uh, interesting things, come back. If you find any um, mistakes or problems uh, in the data that we have put, please highlight. I'll be happy to get it fixed. I'll be happy to get, take a look at it, uh, make sure that they are uh, presented correctly and everything like that. OK, most of the political personalities are using bots to increase their followers. IT cells also try to manipulate the Twitter arms. How does it affect your analysis? Oh, interesting. So this is the one that uh, I think we were asked earlier about uh, um, bias also, right? Bias could be from the selection point of view. Bias could be from the uh, uh, data that we have also. So one of the things that I tell my students uh, is actually we, I, I made this comment even right uh, like a couple of hours before to the students is that so it is it, it is a hard problem right it's a hard problem but we have to make some interesting and not interesting we have to make some so to say intelligent decisions to make right so that's why one of the biggest problems that uh, biggest interesting question that we are asking is the suspect is. So we are meaning we've been having students in the past, not just mine, but that are friends of mine across the world who are studying this bot problem, right? So we know some techniques to do. We can actually figure out so some simple techniques that people have used, features, so to say, that people have used is a follower following ratio, time of the tweets, all of that, right? Some some progress has been made in terms of finding out how the uh, whether to flag, how to flag and handle as a, a bot handle or not. It's it's a it's a hard problem. Uh, but but we have been making progress to the truth. So once we know to some extent with these features, actually one of our students is also working on this, trying to figure out what features will work in our data uh, to find out uh, which is a product. And once we know that, we can remove that and then start looking at the analysis. So for, I, I don't know whether you were there. I don't know when did you join. Uh, but Mohit, uh, you should go back to the slides and look at uh, the slide on Namo versus Raga analysis that we did. It, it we actually find that large proportion of both the followers of both these handles actually have zero tweets and zero followers right so that's an interesting thing right so why does somebody have an account and we also find that there are handles which are following they have zero tweets zero followings uh, zero followers and they're following only one handle or two handles right so 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 we got to actually understand this much better 
and actually find out by teasing this apart, saying there is this PK has so many number of followers. Can you actually tease this apart, saying that there are X amount of followers uh, which are which are real, so to say, X amount of followers which are not. I don't know whether um, Mohit, you or others who are listening have actually seen this. Uh, um, I think the website is metareview.com. Right? It does actually Amazon's products meta review. Uh, it basically shows the value of uh, the reviews that are being given and the actual reviews that the system thinks, which is that there could be a bot which is giving a review, that could be a malicious user which is giving a review. Removing all that, can you actually find out? Uh, can you actually find out? The real, real reviews of the uh, users uh, of the of the products. Okay, so I think I, I just saw that my my iPad. So let's do the. Yeah, I think I lost my uh, Facebook uh, thing, so I'm going to restart here. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, I was talking about uh, uh, bots uh, analysis. So we can uh, we can actually look at so Mohit, we can actually look at the. Uh, bots, uh, so to say, behavior, and remove them and start looking at the analysis again. We could try that. Okay. What's your next question? How reliable information extracted from Twitter is? Because most people don't use Twitter as a primary social media. Yeah, Mohit. I mean, we can, I mean, Facebook. You can't collect the data. Right. So the next question is, uh, where do you go? Uh, we could look at face, uh, Twitter. We could look at WhatsApp. Uh, we're doing both and we could look at instagram so what else do what else can i do right so it's a uh, it's a it's a question definitely it's a good question to ask uh, but my uh, but my uh, oh, but on the other side i could also tell you right we have like a billion tweets right now right so uh, and and most it's people i mean you you're right that most people don't use twitter but actually there are certain pockets of probably uh, so to say, parts of India where Twitter is actually popular. Right? So I would use that uh, as my explanation right now. And of course, I mean, I completely agree uh, that uh, Twitter is not many. In that sense, no uh, platform is, uh, so to say, uh, comprehensive that you can use. Right? I mean, you can 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 you uh, can you tell me a way by which you can actually get data from? Uh, so to say, all users that you're interested in studying, impossible. I mean, one thing you can talk about is WhatsApp. But yesterday, or interestingly, I saw some uh, uh, research results, uh, lakhs and lakhs of users, data collected, which shows that only 24% of 24% uh, or 20-ish percent of people in India uh, only use WhatsApp. Right? So even if you collect WhatsApp data, you, you're basically collecting only 20%. Right. So, so, uh, so it's not clear to me what is the best way to. I, mean, I also teach statistics, so it is not very clear to me how do you get the uh, statistically representative data to do any analysis or get the complete data to do the analysis. Uh, it's 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 not uh, clear to me at all. So our best effort is whatever is available. With that, can we do the best thing that is possible? That's the approach that I'm taking. On. I know that that makes sense, uh, but that's what we're doing. Okay. Any
any any further questions um if not we can wrap up uh, uh thanks for joining whoever joined uh, thanks uh, for taking time and joining uh, the session i was just going through to check uh, if there are any comments um uh, thanks for joining and uh, again if you have any questions comments uh, if you have any suggestions that we could actually do uh, questions that we could take up like for example these kind of bias questions or something some interesting uh, problems that would be uh, study uh, one thing that I we will go back is uh, looking at some face analysis uh, face wise analysis of particular party I think she uh, and asked the question about uh, a, a political party in one phase. We could actually look at it and uh, we'd see if there is anything interesting there. Okay? If nothing else, uh, good luck uh, uh, with everything and feel free to actually dig all the URLs, all the uh, analysis that we've done and feel free to write back to me uh, if you need anything. Thanks.